Hey, what's happening, everyone? Vegetarian Zombie here. In my last Twine episode, you saw Twine in action. Now, in this episode, let's take a look at all the textiling properties. Well, at least some of them. Twine provides a lot of ways for us to customize our text. Now, before I start, if you find these tutorials helpful, let me know by hitting that like button. Of course, feel free to subscribe as well to support the channel. Now, before we dive into the world of textiling, there's also something I want to show you about passage linking. In the last video, I showed you how to link passages. You use the pipe character. You also have another option. You can use an arrow symbol. This works the same way as the pipe, but it clearly shows the relationship between the text and the passage that you're linking to. You can read it like this. The dusty road text goes to the road passage. Now, this is great for languages that are written from left to right, but what about languages that are written from right to left, such as Hebrew? Well, for that, you can just simply flip it. So here it is flipped. Now, nothing has changed. The dusty road text still links to the road passage. It's just formatted in a way that makes it easier to read for right to left languages. Mind you, if you prefer this syntax, you can use it as well. Okay, on to textiling. Now, both the Harlow and Snowman story formats support Markdown. Markdown is a popular formatting language used to customize text for the web. Now, typically, when you mark up text for the web, you use tags. So, to bold some text, we surround the text with a strong tag. In Markdown, we use two asterisks instead. In HTML, to strike through text, we use the strike tag. But in Markdown, we surround the word in double hyphens. Operatively, the difference between Markdown and HTML is small, but Markdown makes it easier to understand formatting at a glance. To learn more about Markdown, head over to markdowntutorial.com. There, you'll learn by way of an interactive tutorial. For us, Let's get busy putting some text styling to use. Okay, so here I have Twine open from when we last worked on it. Uh, and that just happened to be a year and a half ago. Well, you'll also notice I turned off dark mode because when reviewing the last video, I found the links were hard to read in dark mode. Let's play around with some text styling. Open up your Bernie's Revenge story from when you last worked on it. Now let's bold the word darkness. To do so, open up the first passage and then surround the word with two asterisks. Now play your story. You'll see the bolded text. Excellent. What if you wanted to italicize it as well? In that case, you'd use three asterisks. Try it out and look at that. We have bold and italicized darkness. Sounds like a good name for a band. If you just want to italicize it, use forward slashes as seen here. Now play your story and look at that. We have italicized darkness. There's a bunch of other styling options as well. For more, Check out Harlow's documentation to see what you can really do. Harlow also allows you to pass in HTML elements. So in this case, we can just use EM tags to do the same thing. Now, if you happen to write JavaScript, Harlow even accepts script tags. Your script will be processed as soon as the passage is rendered. If you don't write JavaScript, don't worry about it. 
As of version 3, Harlow provides you everything that you need to create awesome interactive stories. As you write your stories, it's often helpful for you to leave notes to yourself in the future so you don't forget about important things. Of course, you don't want the audience to see these notes. To do this, we use a comment tag. A comment tag has two parts, an opening and a closing. Once you start a comment, anything after the comment opening tag will be ignored by Twine until it reaches a closing comment tag. Let's add a comment to our first passage. Above the passage text, add an open comment tag. It's a weird tag that's meant to be unique so people don't accidentally type it in. Now let's add a little note for ourselves. We'll just say, write a better introduction. Now provide a close comment tag. Now run the story. You'll see that our comment is gone, but the page looks a little bit different. The reason for this is that it's gained a line break. We'll address this in a moment. Return back to the passage and remove the closed comment tag. Now run the story again. You'll notice the entire story is gone. This is because Twine thinks the entire passage is a comment. This is a common bug. Let's add a new one, like so. You can also have a comment be on a single line. Okay, now what about that extra line break? Harlow does its best to infer line breaks. In regular HTML, you have to manually add your line breaks. So it actually does this to save us time. But oftentimes we get a lot of unwanted line breaks. Now what we can do is get rid of line breaks by putting our text between braces. Add the following. Now run your story and that unwanted line break is gone. Now sometimes you may have a long passage and you want to add line breaks in that passage to make it easier to read, but you don't want those line breaks visible. For this, we can use the backslash. Open up the passage and add some backslashes. This looks like a strange poem, but the result is that we have everything on one line. To really see this, delete the braces, now run the story. You'll see the text on one line and our space is returned. Also note, the last line contains a backslash because there is no following line. Now delete the backslashes and run. and you'll see the spaces have returned to our Twine story. Now let's get rid of all that and revert our story to where we started.
So that's a start with working with Twine and text styling. In the next episode, we'll explore some more formatting options, and I promise that the next episode will come out quicker than the last one. Life took me by the horns for the last year and a half, and it didn't let up. But I can promise you'll get frequent tutorials in the future. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, let me know by pressing the like button. Of course, feel free to subscribe and activate notifications to be notified about any future Twine tutorial. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.